Good afternoon. That's better. You know, it's such a beautiful day. I don't know why everybody's feeling, or maybe it's because they want to be out there. But, you know, um, I, was in, I was in London uh, this morning, and uh, I had the privilege to preach uh, in, in London. And it's just so wonderful to, well, number one, to be in the presence of God all day long and to be serving and ministering all day long. But, you know, it's refreshing when, <clears throat> when people are hungry for God. And it's, I, I, it gets me excited because whenever you find a people that is hungry for God, you find God. That wherever you find, you know, there's a desperation that you sense in the hearts of people. You, you get a real sense of God's presence in that place and among those people. And uh, I pray that we would continue to hunger for God and continue to go after Him. And I want to tell you, there's, there's really so much more that He has for us than we have encountered so far. And so I just want to, to, to encourage you to not fall into religiosity. We all start aflame. We all start passionate. Um, but if we don't continue in pursuing the Lord, we'll get stuck with religion. We'll get stuck with a form. You know, even even the, how loud we sing or how loud we we worship, um, if if we're not hungering, you know, for the presence of God, we'll just be loud, but without the presence. And uh, so it's not about the style. It's not about uh, you know the formula or the format. It's really God really responds to the hunger in people's hearts. And so I want to encourage you to do that. <clears throat> Well, today I want to kind of prepare us for, for next week. Next week is Resurrection Sunday. Today is Palm Sunday. As you can see, there's palms all around. In fact, uh, Courtright was, was um, nice enough to leave us. There's a b green bucket at the back uh, filled, with, filled with palms. And uh, there's a sign there, Champion Life. Feel free to take one. And... Uh, it's, uh, it's just a reminder. It is Palm Sunday. It is the day wherein Jesus triumphantly enters Jerusalem. And uh, people were crying out and laying palms on the ground for, for his donkey to step over. And they were crying out, you know, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is, is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And, um, and the very same people that cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, were the very same people a few days later screaming out crucify him and so next next sunday is resurrection sunday and i just believe that we should not just be talking about resurrection that i'm sure that in in the heart of god it's not just something that is to be memorialized something to be talked about and preached about and say amen and hallelujah to but resurrection sunday is a day wherein we should be able to demonstrate the power of the living God. Where we should be able to not only preach the gospel, but we should be able to demonstrate the gospel through practical ways. Whether it be refreshing to those who are weary, whether it be healing to those who are sick, whether it be restoration to those that have been uh, divided. We should be able to demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's where we as a church... Christianity as a whole, that's where I think the world kind of is right in, in, in the way they look at us, wherein we have this powerful message, but we lack uh, the evidence thereof. We, we keep talking and proclaiming that our God lives and He's alive and He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and He is almighty and everything else is, uh, you know, is a false God or an idol. But when it comes time to demonstrate, we lack in that area. But I believe that a day is coming where when the church wakes up to realize and to a revelation of who it is that is inside of them and the will of God for them and the will of God that He wants to do through them, that the church would wake up and begin to not only proclaim but demonstrate that the kingdom of God has come. That was Jesus' message Re repent for the kingdom, the authority, the rule, the reign of 
God has come on the earth. That is, what, that is why we call it gospel, good news. What is the good news? The good news is that kingdom has now invaded this kingdom. A more supreme, more powerful kingdom has now invaded the kingdom of the earth. The kingdom of healing has now invaded wherein the sick can now be healed. The kingdom of salvation and restoration and reconciliation has now invaded wherein those who were separated from God can now be reconciled. That is the good news is that Jesus has come and he has brought with him a more supreme, more powerful, more authoritative, uh, more, you know, more gracious kingdom than what we were stuck with. Before Jesus came, we were stuck with what we had. But now that he did come, now that he showed up, now that the kingdom has come and invaded the earth, now we have a choice. We have a higher reality that we can live, uh, we can live from, which can now change the world in which we live in. So I want to talk to us a little bit today about faith. Because next week we're believing for healing. In fact, we're going to do that today. We're going to pray today. And, and last week... Um, we had prayed for people here, and um, baby Xander had, uh, baby Xander had, um, uh, what's the word? Jundice. And uh, so that was uh, Sunday he was prayed for. Monday, was it Monday morning? That he went and gotten checked up, and everything was normal. Yeah, you can be a little happier. You know, and I don't know about, I haven't heard any other testimonies that have, uh, from the people that were up here. But I really believe that healing is the children's bread. That's what Jesus said. That healing is part of our inheritance. That faith is part of our inheritance to see it manifested through healing. One of the hindrances that we have oftentimes in, when it comes to physical healing. Now, the reason why I'm able to, to, to share this with a level of, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that it is real. I'm convinced that healing is for today. Not because of anybody's preaching or anybody's, you know, sermon. I, I, I'm convinced that healing is for today because of what I have experienced. And because of what I have been through, what I have, the healing that I myself have, have encountered and have experienced. But also the healings that we have seen in many people's lives. But one of the things that we realize when, when it comes to physical healing is one of the hindrances that people have is they don't, they're not sure if it really is the will of God. Because some have believed there is a, there is a, a stream of Christianity that doesn't, doesn't believe for healing today. They don't believe anymore for the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be in 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 practice today and so this is you know think you think more along lines of cessationists okay cessationists meaning it has seized the gifts of the holy spirit has seized at the death of the last apostles but we are not, we there's nowhere in scripture that that is ever taught and some you know uh, some scholars have said that the reason that that belief system came to be is because Healings through the people and healings in general had ebbed at that time. And so because of their experience in, in healing taking place, or, or, or in the lack of healing taking place, they made a theology out of it and, and made a doctrine out of it that healing no longer exists. Instead of sticking to the scripture and what the scripture says, that he, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if he healed yesterday, he is the same healer today. And so one of the things that hinders us is we are unsure if it really is the will of God to heal. Matthew 8, verse 1 to 3, we see this prevalent in this man with an issue of leprosy. 8, verse 1 says, When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing... You can make me clean. You see, there's, there's, there's that statement right there. If you are willing. He didn't say, if you can. It was not a question about his ability. Because he had heard of all the things that Jesus had already done, the healings that, he, that had already taken place. 
And because he has heard of it already, he knew that it was within Jesus' capacity to be able to heal. It was within his power to heal. But the question is not, can you? The question is, will you? And that oftentimes is what holds us back when we see people getting healed. We say, oh, that's wonderful. I know God can heal. But when we fall sick, it's like, I know God can heal for them, but I'm not sure if he wants to do it for me. And so we're, we're stuck with this, this seesaw. I want to be healed, but I'm not sure if it's really God's will. Have you been there? You know, we, we've, I think we've all been there. I, I, many of you know that I, have, I, I battle, it's not mine, I battle diabetes. And, and beforehand, before this happened, I was able to really pray more in faith. But when this struck, it's almost like in the back of your head, the enemy is always whispering, well, what about you? How come you've not been fully healed yet? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm testifying that, my, that this diabetes is very much under control now, and it no longer controls me, but it, I'm, God has given me the grace to control it. And so there has been a level of, of victory in that sense, but in terms of complete, perfect healing, I'm not yet there. But that will not stop me from what I believe is in the Word of God. I cannot allow what may be a fact that I am facing right now to cancel the truth that he is the healer. And so this, this idea of, is it the will of God? That oftentimes is, is what holds us back from really receiving all that we have for him. The Bible says in Isaiah, I know it's not there, angel, but Isaiah chapter 53. It says, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered, this is Isaiah prophesying over about Jesus. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We quote that. Do you realize that we quote that scripture? In fact, part of that scripture we stand on firmly right now. We stand on, the, on, 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 on that part of the scripture that, we are, are, that the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. We stand on the fact, part of the scripture that says that we have been forgiven. We have full faith. For those of us that, that, that are really born again, we stand... Not on a physical proof that we are saved. We stand in the firm belief that we are saved because of what Jesus has done. Because of what he did on the cross. Amen. So we, we stand on that. I am I, I'm 110%. I know I am saved because of Isaiah's prophecy. Because of what Jesus did. I know that my sins have been forgiven because the blood of the Lamb which happened on the cross was shed for me. Therefore my sins have been forgiven. And I know beyond a shadow of a, of a doubt that I am forgiven of all my sins. And we stand in faith for that. But the very same scriptures that, we, that talks about our salvation, that talks about our, our peace between us and God, is the very same scripture that talks about our healing. The very same faith that we have for our salvation and our forgiveness of sins and reconciliation back with the Father is the same faith that we need for our healing. There is no difference between the faith for salvation and the faith that is needed for healing. It's the very same scriptures. Isaiah talks about how he was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised. He was crushed for our iniquities. And we say we're no longer under a curse because, because of what Jesus did. We're no longer, we're no longer under, under the punishment and the wrath of God because the wrath of God was put upon Jesus. The punishment of, for my sins was upon him that brought me peace. In the same way, we need to have that same faith. Lord, just as I am saved by faith through grace, just as I believe that I have been reconciled back to the Father because of Jesus, I stand in the same faith that I can receive healing today. We differentiate our salvation, the faith for salvation, the faith for and, 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 salvation and healing. But it's the same faith. It's the same belief system that we need to have to be saved as it is to receive healing. And so we, we know that we have to get rid of this idea of 
is it the will of God? Jesus, in the same way that he died for your sins and my sins. Jesus, who in the same way that he died for your transgressions and your iniquities, is the same Jesus that died for our healing. The same healing. The same healing. <laughs> Why is it so easy for us to believe that we're saved and yet it's so hard for us to believe that we can be healed? It's harder for God. It's harder for God to reconcile one who is a complete sinner to a completely holy God if there is such a thing as harder for him. One who is a filthy sinner reconciled to a holy God and there's a body that he created in his image, in his likeness. It's not hard for him. If he can reconcile us to himself, he can heal our bodies. We see that it is the will of God. And, and Happy talked about it last week. How, you know, there has, there has been error in the teachings in, 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 in the past. Wherein we, we accepted sickness as part of the will of God. That it is his way of keeping us humble. In the same way that it was taught that poverty is the will of God. It keeps you dependent on God. And it makes you more holy. Poverty doesn't make you more holy. It makes you more poor. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise... Somalia will be the most holiest country in the world. <laughs> it makes no sense. Poverty does not glorify God. We have to think kingdom way where he is the king and we are his citizens. The, 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 the state of the citizens is a reflection of the goodness of the king. That's why you go to Saudi Arabia today where there are monarchs, where there are kings. There's no taxes, right? There's no taxes there. And people, there's, there's, the citizens are much, are, are in a better state than foreigners. They take good care of their citizens. Because the state of the citizenry is a reflection of the goodness of the king. Or the capability of the king. And because we're now in the kingdom... How, how can it be, how, how, it makes no sense to me, if our king is good and he permits sickness to stay in your body, if it's his will, it makes no sense. In the same way that it makes no sense for us to believe that being poor and being broke, you know, glorifies God somehow, some way. It doesn't reflect his nature. And so here we see, I want us to see that it is the will of God, it is the will of Jesus to heal everyone. Every single one, it is His will, it is His desire. If sickness was the will of God, then He contradicted Himself by healing everybody. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching... Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. And secondly, demonstrating and healing every disease and sickness among the people. Jesus preached, he proclaimed, and he demonstrated. But I want us to take notice of that one word. Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among the people. It is his desire, it is his delight for, to heal every sickness and every disease. The only place that you see Jesus not being able to heal was in his own hometown. Because, the Bible says, because of the unbelief, because of the lack of faith, because of the unbelief of the people, the unbelief actually limited him to, uh, limited his, his, his fruitfulness in healing people. It is the unbelief of people that causes the healing to stop flowing into their bodies. 
Jesus healed everybody. Then the question now is, how come not everybody is healed? And Happy had, had talked about it last week. And, and, I mean, that's just the honest truth. We know that this is the will of God, but how come not everybody is healed? I don't know. But one thing I do know is it's not a lack on his end. You see, there are times that we, we, we believe in faith and we continue and we, we, we lay hands on the sick and, and we pray for deliverance to take place and it doesn't happen. What do we do then? How do we respond to a seeming lack of results, to a seeming failure on our part? Do we then go out and say, well, healing must not be for today? Do we go out and say, well, healing, you know, maybe God you know, will only use the pastors or those who are you know, life group leaders or a select few. Maybe it's not for me. I'm not saying that every single person that we lay hands on should be healed. But here is an attitude that I suggest we all ought to have. Because in the same way that at times we do fail, and I told, I think it was a life group uh, this past week, there was really a season, and, ha and, and Pastor Happy was telling the truth, there was really a season where every single person, without exaggeration, every single person I prayed for and I laid hands on, died. It was like, and, and because I was the one in charge for that time to, for hospital visitations, it's like, please do not, Lord, please have mercy on them. It's not even about me anymore. It's like, God, please have mercy on them. That God, I don't want to go to the hospital because when I do, they die. And, and you know, it's, it's, what do you do then? Do you stop because of or your lack of results in the past? Or do you allow God to be sovereign because he knew what he was doing with those people's lives? But our job and our responsibility is to continue to lay hands on the sick and continue to believe that they will recover. Our attitude should be Matthew 17, verse 14 to 20. We're hanging around Matthew a lot today. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Have you ever laid hands on the sick and they died? Yes. Have you ever laid hands on the sick and they didn't recover? Yes. But then we're in good company. Because the disciples themselves also failed. But see, here's, here's the attitude that I want us to have when we are faced with those times that nothing happens. I brought them to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Jesus says, you unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of the boy and he was healed at that moment. Verse 19, this is the attitude that we need to have when we see a lack of results. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why could we not drive it out? You see, every seeming failure on our part should drive us to Jesus and begin to press into Jesus and say, Lord, why didn't it work? Why, when I laid hands on them, why didn't they recover? Why, when I laid hands on them, they died instead of getting better? Why nothing happened? Why do we not see the results? You see, there's no failure in the kingdom of God. The only failure that you and I can ever have is trying nothing. That is really the only time that you and I fail is when we do nothing. But when we lay hands on the sick, believing that they will recover, yet nothing happens in the eyes of God, that is not a failure. The fact that you went and laid hands on the sick is, a, is an act of faith already that displays your faith that you are believing that God can and will heal. And so every time that... I'm every, I'm, uh, this is, we're, we're training you because we're expecting you to lay hands next week. Every time that we lay hands on people and, and we don't see the results that, that we're, we're expecting, let us, rather than shrink back, let us press into deeper, into, into Jesus. Let's go into deeper, uh, let's go deeper into Jesus and begin to ask, Lord, was it lack of faith on my part? Was there something that I could have learned? What is it that you're trying to teach me? Because I know that it is your will to heal. And therefore, if that didn't happen, there's something you're trying to teach me. You see that the disciples went to Jesus and began to ask that question. Why couldn't we do it? 
You never see another account where the disciples failed afterwards. Now, I'm not saying that we'll never fail again. But what I'm saying is, let us take that opportunity to be taught of God, to go to Jesus. And this is his reply. He replied, because you have so little faith. That's the NIV. Other translations, which I like better. It says, because of your unbelief, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. He says, because of your lack of faith, because of your unbelief, if you would only have had faith the size of a mustard seed, you know, and, and mustard seeds are tiny. Google it. What he's saying is here, you didn't even have that, that little of a faith, which means your faith was non-existent. And so he taught them. He did not rebuke them. He did not condemn them for seeming failure. Rather, he taught them saying it was because of your unbelief. In the same way, we will never hear the Lord condemn us if we lay hands on the sick and nothing happens. So let's get rid of that fear right now. What if nothing happens? Well, what if something does? We have great testimonies. We've, we've, seen, we, we've seen miracles. We really have. But we don't... If out of the 10 stories, out of the 10 testimonies we have, we've probably laid hands on 100, 150, 200 people. But see, nobody remembers the, the times it didn't work. We always celebrate the time that it did. In the same way, let us not be in fear of what if things don't work? What if, what if nothing happens? Well, if nothing happens, at least you stepped out in faith. It's not really about the results after all. It's about obedience. Obedience is on us. Results is up to God. Our obedience to laying hands on the sick and, and casting out demons, that is on us. The results of it is really all up to God. Let our lack of results, seeming failures, drive us deeper into the heart of God because we know His nature, we know His character, we know that it is His will to heal. Just this morning, um, as I was on my way to London, we were having breakfast at the apartment, and, and Happy was complaining the moment she, she got up. She was complaining of a terrible headache. And, and for some, I don't know if it's the change of weather that we've had, the crazy weather we've had. I was feeling it too. Um, but she was really, really complaining. And for Happy to, she's tougher than I am. <laughs> when she says it hurts, Okay, it hurts, right? I, I know that it hurts. And so she was there wincing, and she was, uh, she was st sitting beside me on the table. And, and I just, you know what? Hey, why not? So I just laid hands on her. Very simply, in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to be flushed out, and I command the healing of God to flow into this head, into this body right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. That's it. And I walked away because I wasn't sure if it worked. <laughs> See, I'm trying to teach you. I'm not, trying to, I'm not here to tell you I'm super faith every time everything works for me. I'm just like everybody else. And so I walked away. And then I turn around. She's smiling at me. And she says, that really worked. I was like, of course it did. <laughs> and then I turn around. I was like, yes. <laughs> you know? And so I went to London and started praying for everybody that was sick. You know, Because it builds faith. And, you know, it's just... I, childlike faith when it does work hallelujah praise the lord if it doesn't work jesus how come that didn't work you know it's like lord what did i do something you know is there something you're trying to teach me right nobody is keeping score here the only thing that we're trying to keep score of is did you try were you obedient did you do what we're, what was asked of you and so it's not, you know, it's not about how, what you're batting your average right now of the 10 people you prayed for, how many did, you know. If one, only one got healed out of a thousand, praise the Lord. If nobody got healed out of a thousand you laid hands on, praise the Lord. You were still obedient. See, let's not get caught up with, with results and, and, and performance and all these things. Let us just be childlike in faith. Jesus said it, so let's do it. I mean, and Happy told you this story with... We've taught our children because they absorb everything. 
they, they believe everything. That's why it's called childlike faith. Even Sam would lay hands on a laptop and the laptop would be fixed. I mean, come on. I, I was working on that, that laptop that crashed, you know, the Toshiba one. I was working on that, and, and we had people working on that, and nothing would happen, and we needed it. And, and Sam said, hey, let's pray for it. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? You know, but in the back of my mind, honestly, it's like, I'm not sure that's for that. You know, I'm sure that, you know, you can lay hands on us and we get healed, but a laptop, you know. And he did, and the thing worked. So it's just, and, and for him, it's like, of course it worked. For me, it's like, of course it did. You know, I was like, I can't believe that worked. And Happy and I would be, it's like, did you, I can't believe that really worked. You know, it's childlike faith. It's what Jesus said, and so that's what we'll do. We'll leave the results up to him. Attributes of faith. What, is, what, how, what are the attributes of faith? Matthew 20. Faith is undeniable. Matthew 20, verse 29. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. <laughs> Who was it? Didn't um, Neri just read this today? Or another something about a blind man. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Then the crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet. But they shouted all the louder, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them, What do you want me to do for you? He asked, Lord, they answered, We want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately, they received their sight. Faith is undeniable. You cannot tell me that you have faith and you go asking once and get denied and that's it. Faith is undeniable. Here are two blind men who were so desperate, but they have heard because in those days and in those times, word travels fast. Don't think that gossip is new, but this is a good kind of gossip. And so word travels fast. These blind men may not have seen anything, but they have heard of the stories of Jesus' acts. They have heard of how he has healed. They have heard of all the wonderful things he has done. And so when they heard the crowd passing by, and they knew that Jesus was in the crowd, they couldn't see where he was, but they began to cry out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on us. And the crowd began to rebuke them. There will always be an obstacle between you and your dream. There will always be an obstacle between you and your answered prayer. Never think for one second that it's going to be Hakuna Matata. Everything I ask for, whatever I ask for shall be given unto me in Jesus' name. There will always be a giant in the way. There will always be a crowd in the way trying to shut you up, trying to keep you down, trying to, trying to block your way from your miracle. But, but faith is undeniable deniable and the more they were told to shut up the louder they became the more they cried out lord son of david and jesus heard not only the voice of the blind man but he heard the faith that was in those blind men and it caused them to stop see faith is undeniable faith is knowing this is the will of god for me and nothing will stop me from getting it i will cry out day and night i will knock and keep on knocking i will seek and keep on seeking i will ask and keep on asking until when until i see the move of god in my life until i see the miracle take place in my life faith is undeniable i refuse to be denied what is rightfully mine which is healing it's my inheritance jesus Jesus died for my healing. It's our inheritance. Inheritances are not released until somebody dies. That's why Jesus had to die so that healing, the inheritance of the people, the inheritance of the believers can be released. And I pray that we would take up this inheritance that we have and hold it dear to our hearts and not just let it go to waste because Jesus had to die for that. Faith is undeniable. Secondly, faith is persistent. Here is an account that, is, that could be controversial a little bit. Matthew chapter 15, 21 to 28, the faith of the Canaanite woman. 
Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew, withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. I hope no parent is thinking that right now. <laughs> Jesus did not answer a word. Man. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him. Now, now, what kind of disciples are these? They don't have the love of God in them. You know? I mean, it shows the humanity of the disciples. It shows us that they were just like, they were, like, they were mere men just like you and I. They get irritated. They get annoyed. They're people just like you and I. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. For she keeps crying out after us. She's annoying. I mean, you're walking with Jesus. You know what I mean? It's, these, are the, these are the same people that some people in the world pray to. <laughs> you know, these, these are the ones that have been saint and sanctified and people pray to them. I, I, could just, I could just imagine what these people are saying to them right now. You know, get away from me. You know? But the disciples said, send them away. For she keeps crying after us. And he responds to her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and worshipped, knelt down, worshipped before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread, healing, deliverance, inheritance. It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Ooh, did Jesus just say that? Do you see um, what I'm trying to say, what, what I'm trying to get at here is when we're trying to press in for our miracle, when we're trying to press in for an answered prayers, do, do we allow offense to take place in our hearts? This is a test here. This is a test. He says, it's not right for me to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. This was an opportunity to be offended at Jesus. Here's a woman who was in need, and first he says nothing to her. It's almost as though he dismisses her, pays no attention to her. Finally, he, he, he replies, but his reply was, seemed so sharp. But sometimes the Lord will offend our minds to expose our hearts. Will we continue to press in? Will we continue when, 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 the, when, the, when the prayer is not answered the first five times? When the, when the prayer is not, when, when what we're believing for is not answered when we want it. Do we get offended and say, forget it. We've known people that have turned away from Jesus because they didn't get what they want. We've known people that have turned away from Jesus because a loved one passed away. We've known people, we've known people that they were believing, they were sincerely believing for something and they never got it and they turned away from God. Do we allow offense to take place in our hearts or do we continue to press in because we know it's the will of God. We know the character of God is good. We know that He is faithful. We know that in all His ways are perfect towards us. Do we continue to press in and Lord, we, I, know that, I know that that's not right, but Lord, all I need is a, is a crumb. He said, she says, yes it is Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus, I don't need the whole thing. If I could just have one crumb, it is enough for me. And look at Jesus' reply. Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at the very moment. Jesus was not insulting her for insulting sake. He was trying to see how far is this woman going to go. And, all, and, and, and her response is, Lord, I just need a little crumb because I know how powerful you are. I don't need the whole thing. If I could just have a little bit of what you have, I know my daughter, my daughter will be made whole. And he turns around and says, you have great faith. Faith is persistent. It is persistent when you don't get 
what you've been asking for. It persists. It keeps on knocking. It's like that, it's like that woman that is asking the judge for, for justice. And she keeps on knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. And the judge finally says, I am going to give her justice. Lest she wear me out with her begging. Lest she wear me out with her knocking. I will release justice to her. In the same way, faith is persistent. I know that I know that I know that I know that this is the will of God. And I will not be deterred. I'm going to keep going. Going back to him. I'm going to keep begging him. I'm going to keep asking him. Until when? Until I see him respond according to the, to the will that I know he has for me. Faith is undeniable. Faith is persistent. Lastly, faith is resolute. Matthew 9, 18 to 22. While he was saying this, a synagogue leader came and knelt before him. We see this thing across the board they come and they worship they come and they kneel and said my daughter has just died but come and put your hand on her and she will live jesus got up and went with him and so did his disciples just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak she said to herself if i only touch his cloak i will be healed then Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter, he said. Your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed that very moment. This is an insert story. She was not even part of the story. Jesus was actually going to another person's house to raise up a daughter. But somewhere along the way, this woman's faith, she saw Jesus and her faith, which is faith is resolute. She says, if I only touch the cloak, I will be healed. If I can only, if I can only grab a hold of him, I am, I am so resolved that if I'm able to get a hold of him, I will be healed. I will be, all this same woman had been suffering for 12 years. And the Bible says, in, I believe it's in Mark, that, that she had suffered under the hands of many doctors. And she had spent all that she had, all of her earnings, all of her livelihood, had gone towards doctors to try to get her healed. And the Bible says that she was better, she was no better than she was at first. But her faith would not let her go. Her faith is resolute. It is resolved. It is saying, this I will have. My faith is in that God is my healer. It, my faith is that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. My faith will not allow me to entertain any doubt. My faith will not allow me to entertain any thoughts that is contrary to what the Word of God says. And the Word of God says that He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God, my healer. And by His stripes, I have been healed. I, I refuse to entertain any other thought. My faith right now is resolute. My faith right now for a sick one, back in the Philippines, my faith right now for a sick one back home, my faith right now for, for, for whatever it is that we're believing for, wherever they may be, my faith will not be shaken. I will be steadfast. I will stay resolute. I will continue to believe until it comes to pass. That, my friends, is faith. When we come and just once, well, it didn't work. It didn't happen. Must not have been of God. That's not faith. That's wishful thinking. Faith is resolute. Faith is undeniable. Faith is persistent. It will keep knocking because we know this is the will of God for you and for me. We stop only when we see it resolved. We stop only when we see it answered. If you can get a hold of a promise in the word of God, it is for you for as long as you can believe it. Whatsoever you ask, if you believe, it shall be given unto you. I'm coming to a place now where I'm more fully convinced that it is out of the goodness of God's heart that people will, will that we will see more and more healings taking place. The more I see into the heart of God through the word, the more I see his nature, the more I see his character, the more I see his compassion, the more I see his heart, the more I am convinced that we are coming into a time where more and more people will experience 
miraculous healings taking place. The people will experience miraculous things taking place in their lives, not only in physical healing, but whether it be emotional, financial, relational. We are coming to a time and a day where we're going to see more of heaven break out over us on the earth because of the heart of God. I know. And the more I read, the more I think, the more I meditate, the more I'm convinced that He is our healer. That He is. It is His desire to heal every sick, to, to set the captives free, to deliver every oppressed, to deliver every demonized, to let the blind see and the lame walk, to have the broken relationships restored. And that's what I'm believing for next week. I'm believing that God would just break out over us as we bring people. Listen, I, I hope that I'm not preaching now, and we've not been preaching the last couple of days, only to preach to the same people next week. I pray that we would bring people who need a touch from God next week. Hey, let's just be challenged.